All right, welcome. Great to see you here this evening. Uh, thank you so much for spending some time here with myself and with Eduardo. I will I'll let him introduce himself. And he, so you all know probably from looking at the web page that we will be your host on the Costa Rican adventure. And yeah, I will let you introduce yourself and you can share a bit about um, this joint venture and anything about yourself that's relevant. Sure. Uh, first, just to make sure that everybody's listening, just to make sure is everybody hearing well. Um, we haven't seen Soul Field, so not sure if um, maybe can he shoot us a text and say, yeah, I, I can hear. Yeah, Soul Field here. Okay, awesome. perfect. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, uh, well, thanks for, for joining us, first of all. And uh, congratulations on this great choice that you've made to join us for this amazing experience that uh, we're going to produce, share, and uh, live with you um, either November or December. I'm not sure um, who signed for what, but um, thank you for coming. And um, as Melanie was saying, well, I'm Eduardo, a owner and founder of, of uh, Chakra Retreat Center, and it's an eco lodge and it's a private cloud forest reserve. It's it's a lot of things. You know, you'll get to to live it, experience it. And really learn uh, about it when we're when we're there, but uh, you know, kind of as a as a quick introduction, we had said a, about five minutes for for this portion. So um, originally, um, this project started as a as a private conservation project, a uh, private reserve that uh, I was motivated to to establish this reserve or create. You know. Um, because of my background as a tropical biologist, I did my my master's uh, studies with with jaguars, and particularly generating a biological corridor for the species to connect the two most important, biggest populations of jaguars in the two most important national parks in Costa Rica. As you all know, in Costa Rica, big into conservation, ecology, and everything else. Um, so this was a five year project uh, and me and, and my partner at the scientific research partner at the time um, established this corridor. And one of the main uh, portions of this corridor goes through where Chakra now sits, where the reserve sits. So that was my main motivator to, you know, buy that land. When I was doing the research, I went there. I, I mean, I saw the area, I saw how important it was. And I also saw the current state of the use of, of that territory, which was in in those years, this was about I mean, close to 15 years ago <clears throat> now. Well, I mean, my thesis was in the year 2000, so that you can imagine, uh, I graduated in 2000. So um, I, I saw the importance of, of, of reclaiming that land. Uh, this is the buffer zone to the park, right? So it's the, the land adjacent to the really important international park we share with Panama. It's Costa Rica's biggest national park, the biggest population of, of this species. Um, and so this was, you know, vital for the beginning of the conservation and the creation of this uh, biological corridor. And so uh, that was kind of my motivation to change the use of the land, uh, you know, back to its original purpose, which is conservation. And so I, I was very fortunate. A, a lot of great things happened uh, and I was able to to come in to a partnership with a good friend of mine uh, and to buy this land together. And so we bought the land. We started a conservation project on the land. And um, a few years into the project, my my partner wasn't able to to continue um, working and pretty much particularly funding a conservation project. It's expensive. If you're not using the land to produce, like if you don't have cows or coffee, like all of my other uh, neighbors or what the property was originally being used for, then, you know, it has to come out of pocket. It's to be your effort to, to conserve, to preserve, right? And so we decided, well, something needs to, to give. We need to be able to use the reserve to generate an income for conservation. So that's how the the idea of a, of a retreat center first started as like a little bit of like cabins that we could rent out to trekkers, this kind of thing, uh, so that it could generate an income to continue to conserve, buy more land, et cetera. That's how it started. My business partner at the time couldn't, um, you know, couldn't take on that responsibility economically. He couldn't do it. So uh, I was, uh, 
forced to find another partner to buy his portion. And it was my really good friend, Felipe. Uh, you might meet him at some point when we're down there. He sometimes collaborates with the project. And uh, so now it's it's my really good friend, Felipe, and myself who own the project. And I pretty much took it upon myself to to fund and, and create this, this retreat center that we now want to use for this, this purpose or many other purposes that have to do with conservation, education, um, you know, experiencing, et cetera, to, um, to give it back to you. Um, but particularly the, the, the biggest thing that I'm most proud of is not just the conservation and the creation of this biological corridor, et cetera, is that the project uh, is of the people it's uh, of the people of San Jeronimo, particularly. I mean, we own it and everything, but I only hire people from this little coffee village. Uh, everybody that works at the, the center and in the property in general, uh, they're all, you know, my neighbors, their kids, people that live in the little village of San Jeronimo. It's a coffee town, which um, has thrived because of the creation of Chakra. They now all, all have created little trails in their property, which we pay them to, to go hike in these trails. So now it's a, an additional income. Uh, they've changed their perception, their view about conservation in general, right? They, at the beginning, thought I was crazy because I wasn't using the land for cattle or coffee and what are you doing? But now they completely understand and they're, they're part of the project, which to me, like I say, it's, it's, it's a huge reward that the community is now married to this project, that the project now funds, uh, you know, for them an additional income throughout the year, you know, coffee seasonal, uh, you know, cows don't really pay that well. It's a lot of work. So they're, they're slowly diversifying their income. And chakra is kind of like at the root of that. And, and we're very proud of this uh, huge achievement. Uh, it's actually a beautiful model of uh, rural ecotourism, you know, a, a, a true, eco project because you know that word is kind of used nowadays you know very loosely like even a front beach resorts made of concrete and you know air conditioning is blasting they'll put a oh eco resort this and that it's like well oh, really um you don't really understand the definition but so chakra is an off the grid retreat center uh which means that we're not plugged to electricity our lighting is solar um we have hot showers uh, with the use of natural gas and cooking as well with natural gas so it's pretty much the only um source of environmental pollution if you will carbon footprint that we're emitting you know aside from transportation uh, of the goods etc uh, but it's also minimal so we're also very proud that we have a, a conservation project that is fixing carbon for the atmosphere and you know actually paying back and we're also you have a very, very small reduced carbon footprint, which is a really great thing. You, you know, when you come, you're going to be a part of that. You'll, you, you, you will be paying it forward to, to nature, even by choosing that destination versus other destinations that, that don't have that model of conservation. So it's, a, it's also part of our, of our mission. You'll, you'll, you'll be um, actively a part of that. Um, what else? Which is awesome. Uh, so that's a little bit about the Chakra Eco Lodge. Will you tell them a little bit about you? So Eduardo is the sort of adventure facilitator, uh, owner of the lodge, but also in our retreat, you're going to be facilitating sort of the adventure. It's all an adventure, but the adventure portion. So can you just tell them a little bit about your background mm -hmm. connected to adventure and why you're the one that will be facilitating this? Um, yeah, so my background, you know, aside from, from being a biologist, uh, I worked a few years actually in the field, research and that, but I quickly transitioned into um, adventure tourism. Costa Rica is, is one of the leading countries in the world uh, where adventure tourism is our, is our number one way of life, uh, actually tourism. Uh, but adventure tourism is a huge component. So I saw that opportunity. Uh, this was, you know, in the 90s, was all starting. And so I transitioned and I became an adventure guide. And through becoming an adventure guide, I, I eventually, and this is like saying it really quickly, it was a number of years, uh, I, I became an adventure racer, which is, you know, a, a sport that most people don't know about, but it involves many different adventure sports at a very, very high level. So I became like a professional in many different adventure sports, uh, most adventure sports. And I competed in a national level as, uh, well, I'm actually still the, the national cap the captain of the national team. And so, you know, through that expertise and everything, I, I, I thrive, I enjoy, I, I, it's my pleasure 
to teach other people, share these experiences, guide these processes, uh, you know, safely uh, help you maneuver uh, these environments to to create, a, you know, amazing growth in, in, in many ways, not just through the experience, but the processing of that. Uh, and that's where obviously Mel's going to come in to to really help us with with that, taking full advantage of of this uh, this process. But so when I you know bought the property and everything, my my first idea was, well, how can I make this an adventure lodge? Because adventure is my passion as well as conservation. So you know, it didn't take me long. Uh, I went, I looked for the waterfalls that were in the property, like uh, the giant trees that we have there and everything. And I, I created what I call the adventure playground. And it's a beautiful playground of adventure activities uh, where we teach adventure. So it's like an adventure learning playground uh, for all levels. And it's a choose your own adventure model there. Uh, you're going to have a chance to do, you know, adventure activities such as like even rappelling down a, a beautiful waterfall, climb an ancient 300 year old uh, Strangler Fig, uh, obviously with full, full ropes, equipment, safety is our number one priority, a professional in, at this. And uh, so, yeah, I, I will be your facilitator in, in those experiences. Also, you know, I, I love nature. I'm, uh, I love nature interpretation. I love explaining to you what, what you're probably not seeing or, or just seeing a glimpse of. It's very, it's very deep uh, what goes into, you know, life in in the forest, so to speak, especially the cloud forest where uh, Chakra is located. And so I'll be delighted to, to be your, your guide in, in all of these activities. He will tell you every species of bird, of hummingbird, Only if of you plant. want. Only if you want. <laughs> no, you will like... get that, <laughs> whether you like it or not. It's great. He's very enthusiastic. Bring your about, binoculars. Yeah, about the amount of, of flora and fauna and everything that is that you'll experience and see it is actually quite breathtaking in such a, a small area and that's the beauty of Costa Rica you see so so much um so that's my I think part of my dream is to bring the best of the external adventure with the inner work because you know in my 40s I began to rock climb and ski and mountaineer and do these things that in my life I had never really done much of and I found that engaging in something physical that stretches us uh, in nature is one of the most profound ways to grow and to overcome limiting beliefs and patterns or for those of you who have worked with me and are, are working with me know that that's the essence of the work that I do is looking at what's at the core that is keeping us stuck that is keeping us limited in any way and that's my ongoing inner work is to keep excavating the blocks the, the fears the uh, places that I'm not whole and so this is the perfect opportunity you know to step outside of your comfort zone um, or just to your limit or exceed your limit. I'll be there to support you at whatever level you want to, you want to take it uh, to challenge you, to support you, to, to, to guide you, to give you, you know, all, all the confidence that you need if you, if you want to go there, or if you just want to, you know, watch from the sidelines and marvel and cheer and support, that's incredible as well. It's a, it's a beautiful experience too. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it's just so thrilled to to bring sort of the best of what we both have to offer um, to you in such a, a sacred and, and beautiful space. So I just wanted to say sort of what these retreats are and what they're not. It's not a yoga holiday. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with a yoga holiday, but I am not one for the superficial. I like to go deep. Um, and you're going to have elements of a holiday. Absolutely. You're going to be in a beautiful country. You're going to have time to rest, to relax, to restore, to, you know, renew the nervous system. Essentially, uh, they're, the retreats are designed for both a balance between the external and the internal, both the active and the restorative pieces. So that those are woven together in a really um, skillful way so that you are both, um, stimulated in a good way and also have time to integrate to um, 
digest and to really walk away uh, with a sense of self that comes from uh, a bigger place beyond the conditioned uh, ego self. And in, you know, in that, that goal, which is obviously the, the, the goal takeaway from, from the retreater, I mean, you'll have that possibility. Um, the design that we've done of the itinerary is, is thinking about that process, right? Which is why, um, um, well, maybe we can go through that, which is why we have four nights at Chakra to begin with, and then we end with two nights at the beach. Okay, the idea is that most of your process is going to be experienced uh, and, and, you know, created at Chakra in this off the grid environment where you are reconnecting, right, with, you, with your inner self, uh, with others, with nature, right, like straight, you're going to be in one of the most pristine environments in the entire country at the base of our highest mountain. It's a very powerful place to be. Um, you're going to be immersed there, no cell phone, so you'll, you, you won't have distractions of that type. You'll be fully present, um, hopefully, and if you want. Uh, <laughs> and once we transition from that container where all these wonderful things are going to happen, um, you'll have two days uh, at the beach that, of course, we're going to be enjoying and the water is beautiful and swimming and, and, and everything, but you'll have that time also to really look inside and see what really happened uh, up there and, you know, process, really, really process and integrate this, this experience and the learning that comes from it, uh, you know, before we kind of set you back into your daily life, you know, where sometimes, you know, these, these, these processes might, might, we might have a hard time uh, because we're distracted. We'll, we'll go back to our normal life. We have distractions and, you know, sometimes some of the learning wasn't integrated because we didn't have that buffer time. So it's designed for that, right? You do, you know, the bulk of, of the work up there, you're going to be, you know, coming out of your comfort zone in this incredible environment. Uh, and then we're going to put you in this really comfortable, beautiful beachfront uh, uh, resort uh, where you'll have, again, use of your cell phone and all, and all the things, you know, post all you want, call your family, everything else. Uh <laughs> Yeah, or and, not, and, and, or not, <laughs> and transition back, and then really, you know, have that space, and you, obviously, obviously, you still have Mel with you, right, to to continue to digest and process uh, a, this this process and this experience. And all of it is is through the lens of a holistic model. So we're looking somatically. Everything that that I do in the inner work is connected to the physical body. So. You know, there's going to be daily yoga practice, meditation, we're going to dance, we're going to um, do all sorts of practices, uh, techniques, you're going to learn more tools for yourself, so that everything for, you know, you yoga teachers understand the levels of the koshas that all five of those koshic layers of your being are going to be nourished, are going to be uh, worked with and supported. So it's not just about the mental, it's not just about the emotional, it's not just about the physical, but we've really created a beautiful week to touch upon all those aspects of your of your being, of your human experience. Do you wanna talk about the community service? Just oh, okay, bit? so, well, let's just talk about the, the you wanna do a little walkthrough of each day or no? No. No, okay, give us a surprise. Oh, it's on the website too. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they can ask questions. Yeah. Um, so at the the uh, end of the, we're going to be four nights at Chakra, so five days. So on the fifth day, when we come back down from, from the reserve, back down to the town of San Jeronimo, an essential component of uh, rural ecotourism and of the model that we have chosen at, at Chakra with the town and, and you know, everything we've developed with them, um, uh, a really important component that that we work on, you know, it, with every group that visits the the retreat center and the reserve, um, is a community service project that we have uh, ongoing. We established a women's group for the ladies of San Jeronimo to have another income, uh, and you know, um, most of them are housewives, as you know. It's it's mainly the men that go out. Some of these ladies also pick a lot of the coffee and these things, uh, but. 
Uh, we also wanted to give them a, a chance to develop. And so they've created little projects of their own. And so every group that visits Chakra and becomes part of this experience uh, gets to, to do community service with the women's group or the school. It's a primary school that, that is in the, in the town. And so um, the association of the town decides what project gets to be benefited by each group. So they will decide for us and we'll be there either working with the women's group. It could be in the nursery that they have or you know, plants, et cetera. They also have essential oils that they're learning to, to create, et cetera. And so, you know, this is exciting. You'll, you'll get a chance to, to do a little bit of community work. It's usually two or three hours before we head a back down to the beach. And so you'll be a part of that. And, and that'll definitely leave a, a mark in the community. And, and in yourselves as well. It's a it's beautiful experience and, and uh, incredibly rewarding as well. Um, well, let's, uh, I think we'll talk about just the dates and the, the investment. Mm -hmm. All of this information is on the website, but just to reiterate, so the dates that we have, we've got 12 spaces uh, per retreat only. So they're very intimate retreats. This isn't something where, you know, there's gonna be 50 people. It's very intimate. We're going to, um, you're going to get a lot of attention and a lot of uh, support from from the two of us throughout this week. Uh, the dates that are available and open, the first retreat is November 20th to 26th, and the second is December 4th to 11th, 2023. Uh, and like I said, 12 spaces available for both of those. We have an introductory offer right now up until May 11th. So if you're like, yes, this is a soul. Yes, I want to go. I don't know how I'm going to figure it out, but I'm going to make it happen. Um, we have a $400 discount. So the entire retreat would be 2,800 uh, and it's in US dollars. And your requirement to reserve your space for the retreat is $400 uh, deposit. And then we can set up a payment plan if that's something that you would prefer to make it uh, easier for you to uh, pay in installments leading up to the retreat. And that's something that is available. So just to give you that heads up, not to wait if this is something that you are really interested in committing, then do so before May 11th to get that extra um, introductory bonus. And the other thing that I would like to offer to the first three people, three people, <laughs> three people uh, that are ready to commit is to receive a 45 minute one-on-one -on -one, uh, energy healing session with me over Zoom, which is a value of valued at $450. So for the first three people that sign up, you're also gonna get that bonus of that, that time with me and, and looking at an area of your life that you would like greater support and healing around. Um, so that's the investment piece. Anything else well, before we open up questions? Yeah, the only thing we should probably mention. Um, so everything's included in the, in the price except your first night uh, and- Well, the night before the retreat. The, well, yeah, the night before the retreat, the, the night that you fly into to San Jose, um, which you can choose whichever hotel you want. We rec we're gonna recommend a hotel that that is recommended and that makes logistics better because the next morning uh, we leave, uh, we drive to, to the cloud forest. Um, so, uh, that's, that night isn't included. And if you choose an early flight on the last day of the retreat, uh, a, I mean, no, if you choose an early flight, you're going to have to fly the next day because the, the last day we drive from the beach to the airport. So uh, you won't make it on an early flight. You'll have to book a, a later flight. If you don't like flying in the evening, like after 5 PM, uh, then you're going to book a flight the next morning or the next day. Uh, so that, then you would require a night in San Jose on the back end uh, to fly the next morning. And some other things that we have as, as bonus, this isn't part of the official retreat, but things that we love to do. So there's an opportunity to come a day early and go whitewater rafting and zip lining as well. So that would be an add-on day prior to the retreat. Uh, for the November dates, we're going to be going on that adventure with you. Uh, and then for dates beyond that, you can still do that, but we may not be there with you. You'll be in good hands, you'll have guides. Um, but in the November retreat, we're going to also go on that experience of the whitewater rafting and zip lining with you that day as well. So that's another 
adventure you can add on and come a day earlier if that is something that thrills you and it's excites awesome. you. It's really fun. Again, it's for all levels and oh, yeah. ages. It's very Costa Rica, you know, zip lining is huge. And, you know, water rafting also made us pretty famous uh, in the world as well. So those are two really cool um, activities that we'll be offering at the, at the start. So the, the day before the start of the retreat. Um, and also, I'd like to just offer and comment that it's not unusual for people that come visit us in these retreats uh, to do extensions, either prior extensions or post extensions to visit other parts of Costa Rica, right? Um, there's a lot of diversity in, in, in our country and there's a lot to see. So it's, it's common for people to come a few days early and do well something like this is why we're offering a, a, the, the combo for rafting and, and uh, zip lining because you know, it's kind of like an easy way of showing you something more, but there's a lot more, right? So um, I also own an adventure company and this is pretty much what I do for a living is planning adventure vacations for people in, in Costa Rica and around the world. Uh, and so if you'd like my help and my assistance, I'm, I'm there to, to support you and plan an amazing vacation for you either, like I say, pre or post the retreat. Yeah, even if you're like, this is enough adventure that I can handle, you can still help them plan oh, yeah. visits in Costa Rica yes, that aren't necessarily, course. if you're like, that's enough adventure, yeah. I just want to go, you know, lie on a beach or look at something historic. Then Of course, and, and sometimes, I mean, we've also done this with retreats, um, people come for the retreat and then their family members join after for an extension with the family, right, or the partner or you know, the friend friends or, or, or whatever it is. So, so sometimes people do this before and then they retreat or sometimes they retreat and then they do an extension with their family. And so I also come in to that part to help you plan everything that you need essentially to, to do that. Yeah, so yeah. I, I think um, it's a good time just to open up to any questions that you mm -hmm. have. So I would invite you to either unmute yourself and, and ask uh, any details about questions? Maybe you want to know about food or uh, sleeping arrangements, like any questions that you have, however detailed or or broad are fine. And for those of you who aren't able to be on camera but have a question, you're welcome to type it into the chat. So um, yeah, please let us know how we can uh, support you. Oh, I need to unmute. No, those, you can unmute yourself okay. and just speak forward. Gail. Yeah, I'm just wondering about the food. So is it um, vegetarian? What kind of food is served? So Wonderful. do you want to talk about the food? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so um, chakra being off the grid, uh, we usually prefer a vegetarian meals. Um, most of the food we also try to source as locally as possible, some things even from San Jerónimo and most of the things from the region. Uh, you know, Costa Rica, we produce most of our food anyway. Uh, so we, we try to source it as, as close to chakra as we can, be responsible that way. And, and mainly, uh, yeah, vegetarian meals. Sometimes we do exceptions and, you know, have, have things like chicken, uh, even fish uh, at, at some retreats. And... You know that's that's something that we we can talk about. It's um, optional. It, it is optional, but we're super open uh, to to all kinds of you know vegetarian requirements or or meal requirements in in general. And then at La Cusinga, it's it's open pretty much international menu. Uh, that, that's you know Cusinga is is a, is a bigger a bigger beach resort. Uh, not not big because it's actually a, a boutique. It's beautiful. It's set in their own reserve. They also own a beachfront reserve. It's beautiful, um, but their their option is more varied. So a, the type of meals that we have at Chakra are very hearty. It's going to be a lot of vegetables, uh, rice, beans, uh, you know, uh, salads, uh, a lot of you know natural food as natural as, as we can. Uh, we don't have like a like a fridge system. We have a, a big cooler with ice, you know, for for perishables there. Um, but the food is obviously prepared in the moment uh, by wonderful humans from the community. These ladies are extraordinary. These these cooks, you're going to be trying all the Costa Rican culinary dishes like like casado, 
right? And, and tor empanadas, eh, tortillas, gallo pinto, right? Like, like really delicious uh, meals that, that they have planned for us. Yeah, so at the Eco Lodge, you're, you're really getting a very uh, authentic experience of Costa Rican cuisine, which I we just spent a few months in Costa Rica, and I love the food so much. I think I said that to, to you like every day. I'm like, there isn't a meal in Costa Rica that I didn't love. It's simple food. It's clean. It's um, beautiful. And as Eduardo was saying, that it is the, the families from the community that he has hired because he keeps you know, the resources that are created from the Chakra Eco Lodge to feed back into the community. So he doesn't hire chefs from, you know, another country. It's very localized. And these women are are so big hearted and lovely that you, these are the people you want to be cooking your food with love and intentionality. Um, I just saw uh, Soulfield says, would vegan and gluten free food be an option as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we like you can imagine in this world of retreats how how common that is right especially with all the yoga all the yoga people that is <laughs> probably the most common. very particular yoga yeah. people that, yeah. that are and so we're very no, no. Uh, conscientious I, I wouldn't say that that mel and i regularly eat uh vegan or vegetarian uh we totally can uh and and we do every once in a while but at the at the lodge yeah this is yeah. oh there's always going to be options for specific dietary needs and as you sign up uh, we will intentionally ask you to please let us know your needs and then we will cater specifically for that yeah it's a very small group right it's 12 people think of this so like uh, martina and, and roxana uh, which mother and daughter uh, they run the kitchen and they love they they're always loving to do special things for 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 people that's like, that's their pride, you know, oh, she likes such and such. And so they'll bake a pie for you in the mountain. It's crazy. Uh, but, but this is the, the, the type of, of experience you'll have. Um, yes. Okay. Flying out from Vancouver direct. So the, there are no direct flights that I know of from Vancouver to Costa Rica. You can fly via Toronto. Um, or there are stops in the U.S. in Houston, for example, and Mexico. And Mexico. So the short, Mexico. the shortest flight, let's say the most direct flight, is uh, Vancouver, Mexico, Mexico, Costa Rica. It's kind of like the straightest. Um, you know, if you don't mind the Mexican customs and that kind of thing. Um, the one I usually do, and I've been living in Canada for eight years now and traveling back and forth. Imagine how many times. Uh, the one I usually do is is Toronto, Costa Rica, because then that way th there's no more customs, right? It's it's much easier, you know. You don't have to go customs in the states and that. And then there's the other issue with going into the states. If you're not vaccinated, then sometimes there might be issues. Uh, I don't know exactly, but um, if you stay within Canada, it's much easier, right? You're just going from from one country to another, and that's it. Uh, with the whole thing with bags, everything else, you you avoid more complications if you stay within the country. Um, so I, I like that one. It's it's a little bit longer. It's maybe, you know, in the end, two or three hours longer than doing any other. But in the others, you're going to have layovers too. You're going to have, like I say, customs in and out again. So yeah. And again, you know, and a search, a Google search will help you figure out what the best flights are. We can offer, you know, we've, the last time we went was with Air Canada. It was great. It was uh, Vancouver to Toronto, Toronto to San Jose. Um, San Jose is the closest airport um, and the airport that you'll want to either fly into or get to for the start of the retreat. If you fly into Liberia, for example, um, it's further away. And But if you're going to be in Costa Rica for a week before mm -hmm. or something, but you'll want to get your your make your way to San Jose for the start of the retreat. Yeah. Um, so How long does the shuttle take from San Jose? Good question. So that day we leave, it's about three hours uh, until we make it to San Jeronimo. At the start, this, it's a beautiful surprise when we get there. But anyway, uh, it, we have to cross the, the highest mountain pass in the country, uh, which is actually stunningly beautiful as well. That drive is so magical. You're going essentially, you're, you're going from rainforest to cloud forest, to the Alpine of Costa Rica, all on a drive, it's gorgeous. We stop at the top of the mountain, we go to a, to a beautiful, very local restaurant where you have your, your first 
a kind of introduction to Costa Rican cuisine, tortillas, and it's amazing. And so we usually stop there, you know, to use the restrooms, to buy a delicious coffee or, or you know, have a snack, this kind of thing. Uh, so it cuts the trip, uh, but usually it'll, it'll take us about three hours from San Jose to, to, the, to the town of San Jeronimo. Um, that's usually how long it takes. And then once we get there, um, the first activity will be a, a coffee plantation. You're telling them? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> coffee plantation experience with the uh, locals that have uh, so I'll started do a, their business. I'll do a little thing. So when I when I started bringing groups to to the town to Chakra to the town, uh, I approached so the community. Their their main income is coffee, right? They're a coffee producing at seventeen hundred meters, so super high altitude coffee, which is the most delicious. The coffee is amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and they produce it locally within their own community. So I approached the community while well, I was already part of it. And I said, we, we need to create a coffee experience for the people to understand where they're coming and how coffee becomes this drink. You know, most people don't even know how that works, how complicated, complex, difficult, time consuming, energy consuming it is to go from this plant that has this little red berry to this coffee that you drink. You know, it's, it's a lot of, uh, work that goes into it and it's really cool to understand it especially when you live it from people that are actually doing it so we created our, our own the community well uh created their own grassroots uh experience coffee experience i don't like to call it a coffee tour because you know that kind of makes it very commercial it's not we're, we're essentially going to freddy's a, and his son's a coffee plot you know talking about coffee there they don't even speak english so i'm usually translating you know it's really cool and they'll show us how they go from the bean to the roasting, and then we'll be able to buy their finalized product, which is from producer to you, right? Without intermediaries, without, you know, companies charging you taxes, et cetera, which is really a wonderful a benefit of being there. Most people buy lots of coffee, which is another benefit for the community because then they get to sell it directly, right? Um, which is awesome. Uh, and so, yeah, that's like a little bit of a, a treat that we give you. So as soon as you come into the, the community you're greeted by Freddie and his family into this kind of coffee experience which kind of sets the tone of wow okay these people live here in this super far away like the mountain village they do this uh right and and now they have more opportunities because literally you are there uh okay are there special prices for a couple going as opposed to a single person um good question that's not something we've discussed what i would say is just email me uh, if you have questions about that, I have not considered that. So send me an email at m at um, and let me sit with with that. Um, well, next, we're already extending the four hundred dollar discount, which is pretty. Huge. Yes, right now there's that mm -hmm. introductory discount uh, over here. Uh, what do you have? iPhone two. Uh, <laughs> hello, iPhone. Uh, uh, what do you have uh, at the retreat in case one may need medical attention? Really great question. Um, so, um, well, I, I am certified 80 hour CPR and first aid, uh, responder. So, I mean, I would be your first responder in, in any case, uh, and also a, to go from chakra to the hospital in San Isidro, which is a full on hospital, uh, it takes less than an hour, right? So in any true medical emergency, we won't even, you know, screw around with it and we're just going to put you in our car, I'm gonna drive you straight to the, to the hospital, right? Um, and then from there, you can you can be airlifted if it's a super emergency to our private hospitals in, in San Jose in, in less than an hour. So in, if it's a true emergency, you could be in, you know, really world-class uh, medical attention within potentially within two or three hours. So um, that's in case of a, of, a, of a big emergency. Thank God we've never had any big emergencies. We've had, you know, sprained ankles. We've had, you know, somebody falls and scrapes a knee, these kinds of things. At the lodge, I have full uh, uh, medical supplies to take care of anything like that. But if you if you need a, uh, you cut yourself, you need, a, a, you know, stitches, that kind of thing, we go to the hospital in San Isidro. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a first world class hospital. Costa Rica's medical uh, industry is, is world-class. We can actually take a pride in, in it. Don't, don't think that because we're a third world nation that, uh, you're going to be left in a ditch or something. No, not at all. 
Yeah, what I found so striking um, about Costa Rica is um, their level of literacy, I think, is the highest level in of the world. literacy for a third world country. No, in the world, 96%. The world? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? And Google it. <laughs> okay, I got I knew we'd had that conversation yeah. in the world. Um, and what I found is the, the people in Costa Rica are incredibly friendly. I It, it feels safe to be in Costa Rica. Um, many people speak English, especially in the cities, uh, in the small town of San Jerome, Jerome, how can you say it? Jeronimo, Jeronimo, San Jeronimo. Um, San Jerono, Jeronimo, I'm gonna work on that. Um, then yeah, the, these smaller villagers and people that live in the rural areas may not uh, speak as much English, but it's also a great opportunity um, to to practice some Spanish, we can- They'll love some. to communicate with everybody. They're no, the most can. beautiful. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to mention, which is unique, and of course, everything is optional, but once we get to San Jeronimo uh, and do the, the coffee plantation experience, from there, it's five kilometers to Chakra Eco Lodge. And you have the opportunity to walk that to hike that five kilometers into the lodge. And can you tell them why that was your original intent? Yeah, I mean, we, we still, uh, yes, it's an offer because remember everything about chakra is choose your own adventure, right? Um, you choose if you wanna participate from our activities, you you know, a, a, the, the, the center is there for you, right? If what you wanna do is just hang out in our hammocks and our main platform and read or meditate or sleep uh, or cook with the ladies and you don't wanna come out to do any hikes, or activities, that's absolutely fine. A lot of people choose that. Uh, so choose your own adventure. But, um, you know, if we go back to the original purpose of why the reserve was created, right? It was created as a buffer zone to the park, a biological corridor, uh, you know, to compensate the carbon emissions, right? In the forest that is growing in the reserve. So, you know, in in following this this way of thinking, conservation, ecology, we give you the opportunity to offset your transportation to the lodge and hike. It's a beautiful hike. You hike on, on a, a perfect gravel road that takes you all the way there. It's, uh, it's an uphill hike because eventually you are going from the town to the entrance of the park, right at the highest mountains of Costa Rica. So there is an elevation gain, but it's gradual. And it's beautiful. You'll you'll get to escape the town and start to see you know little houses here and there. You know the agricultural kind of component until eventually you go into the cloud forest where Chakra is located. So it's a wonderful way to kind of acclimate to to really feel the place and to feel proud that in the end you didn't take the ride. Uh, or <laughs> if you want to take the ride, that's totally fine. We're still gonna have the the truck. Uh, to drive you to to the top, and you're not carrying your bags. I hear no, I'm yeah. like feeling some of you are like, am I carrying my luggage up there? No, <laughs> you just you don't have to carry your no, luggage. You don't have that. to carry anything. Yeah, no. So, it's so right after the the coffee experience, uh, those who want to hike, hike. I'm gonna be honest with you. Most people hike. Most people that don't have some sort of in incapacity or an injury or or some other you know greater uh, reason, most people. I would say 90% of the people actually hike. Yeah. And the same when we come down. When we come back down uh, after the yoga session in the morning on day five uh, to do the community service project, uh, we also give the opportunity for you to hike down. We usually give you a, a, a plastic bag and you can pick up any trash. There won't be a lot because not a lot of people live there, but we usually give you the opportunity to you know, do a little bit of you know, cleaning as you go. It'll be all downhill uh, back to the, to the village. So that's another option to, to do that as well. All right, are there any other questions? Feel free to unmute yourself or to type in the chat. These are great questions, by the way. I love the specificity of it all. Mm -hmm. Victoria. Hi, hey, Melanie. Hi. Um, okay, so I had uh, several. Um, number one, is there a, um, a main airline that goes in and out of Jose? Is there, because I'm coming, would be coming from Florida uh -huh. in the States. Yeah. So is there a main airline I should look at? All or of the airlines. San Jose is a, is a huge destination, especially from Florida. But uh, I mean, United, I'm sure has a bunch of flights, American as well. Um, 
yeah, even now there's uh, there's less expensive airlines from from Florida also because it's literally kind of like a puddle jumper. It's very close. Um, so, oh, yeah. So, okay. And um, also, um, as far as um, sleeping arrangements, are we sharing rooms, bunks, sleeping in tents? <laughs> Let's see, you want to do the share screen? Sure. Sure. So Eduardo will pull up uh, the website. So if you're interested in looking more at the Chakra Eco Lodge, um, mm -hmm. then you can find this here. And then the last two nights are at La Cusinga. So all of the accommodations are shared accommodations. We have accommodations that are going to be for either two or three people mm -hmm. uh, is the sharing. Um, and at Chakra Eco Lodge, just to, again, to give you an idea, so the, you, the toilets are flush toilets mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and there's showers and there's hot water in those showers as well. So, and, and here. So this is an example. This is one of our quadruple rooms. You see three beds there. There's another one that the camera didn't catch. And so we usually use our quadruple rooms for, for three. Um, usually we use quadruples when it's families mm -hmm. and this kind of thing. Uh, but so this is what it's going to look like. There's quadruples and there's doubles. So uh, we have three quadruples and three doubles. So, you know, first come, first served. If, you, if you're bringing a partner, and uh, then we'll put you in a double. Or if you're coming with your friend or somebody that you feel comfortable with, uh, then, you know, you can solicit that, uh, the, you know, like I say, first come, first serve. Um, otherwise, you'll be sleeping in, in accommodations for three. Um, sometimes it happens if we don't get everybody, um, a, a four-person accommodation can eventually sleep too but this is what it looks like uh, as a parenthesis, which I didn't mention, which, you know, there's going to be a lot of questions about chakra when you're there. Um, if you can, if you can look at, at the wood there. Um, so a, an enormous portion, most of the lodge, um, because we don't have any power tools, everything was, was handmade. And most of the wood that you see was sawed in place from extracted trees from the reserve, fallen trees that obviously we get special permits from uh, the national park, which we border, uh, to be able to use that wood in the construction uh, of, of the collage. So, you know, that's another really amazing uh, component where we... That's very cool. Very cool. And then my, um, thank you for that. And um, what will the weather kind of be like that time of the year and what type that's of clothing and things would we need to... Yeah, bring. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be the dry season, uh, which in Costa Rica usually means it rains less, right? We're a tropical country. It pretty much, even in the middle of the dry season, it can rain any day. Uh, obviously, it, it, there won't be torrential rains and it probably won't rain at all, uh, but it might rain. So we always ask, and you're, you're, when you sign up, you're going to get obviously a gear list, a recommended gear list. Um, but we always ask that you bring some sort of a, of a rain shell. Um, uh, what are the temperatures? So chakra being at 1700 meters elevation, is like uh, 4,000 feet. Uh, it's cooler climate. It's not as humid and hot as other parts of the, of the country. Um, so during, at night, it goes down to, ooh, what's it, uh, Fahrenheit? I just will have to tell you in Celsius. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> you have to do the conversion in yeah, it's Fahrenheit. It's but. Fahrenheit. Uh, <laughs> but it's about, it, it can go down to 10 Celsius, even, you know, at night, which is quite cool for Costa Rica because we're usually in the 20s, you know, mid 20s to high 20s. During the day, it'll get a lot warmer, especially if it's sunny, if we're outside, uh, when we're repelling the waterfalls and the other rock walls where we're, we're exposed in the sun, it, it, it'll be like, mid to high 20s um, and then we're at, when we're at the beach it might be a little bit hotter even into the 30s not as common but it, it could get into the 30s uh, when you're like just you know sitting in the sun in the beach etc yeah high 20s mm -hmm. celsius celsius <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay wonderful thank you is there anything else victoria um no not right now thanks great questions thanks anything from brenda I was actually just wondering, is there any um, requirements for vaccinations or anything like that? And Absolutely what not. about Absolutely any not. kinds of um, 
critters or <laughs> animals that we might have to be concerned about or yeah, yeah. Good, good, yeah. Question. good question you know our, our first introduction in when we arrive in chakra i usually have like a, a chat about critters because it's like everybody wonders about that a lot so dangerous critters very rare like very rare at chakra we have one species of a uh, toxic snake, which is not one of the like really poisonous snakes that we have in Costa Rica. We have them in the lowlands. Um, so luckily, because it's higher and cooler climate, we only have one species. It's a small snake. It's it's actually um, really docile. Uh, but for this purpose, we always ask that when you're walking around, especially at night around the lodge, and, and always that you have closed-toed shoes. We ask that you only use your sandals when you're inside your room or when you're you know, going from like the, the main house to the bathrooms and that kind of thing, you can kind of get away with that. But we usually ask that you, ask, that you have uh, close toe shoes. There's ants, you know, that can that can bite you as well, sting you. Um, also rare to see scorpions, but none of our scorpions are deadly at all. It's like being stunned by a bee. It kind of sucks. <laughs> but um, that well, about mosquitoes? Um, mosquitoes at the lodge are more rare because of the altitude. Uh, they're usually more common in the lowlands of Costa Rica, but that's why every single room has a, a bug net for your bed. Um, and yeah, you can use bug spray during the day. if You feel like there's any small bugs and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, other than that, it's pretty benign. Uh, we are limiting a, one of Costa Rica's most diverse and wild environments of the entire country, which is the International Park of La Amistad. Uh, a, the project, the environmental conservation project of Chakra, we've established uh, uh, cameras, uh, infrared cameras, where we capture wildlife around and in the reserve. And we've seen all kinds of animals, including the jaguar, right? And all six species of cats, the, 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 the pigs, the monkeys, et cetera, right? They're there, but they don't visit us at the lodge. Um, sadly, that would be cool to see a jaguar. <laughs> at the lodge. Love to see a jaguar. But uh, yeah. Is that clear, Brenda? And yeah, and no vaccines required. No vaccines required in the country Costa at all, and a chakra no not at all. Yeah, and so there's quite a variance from the first four nights in the cloud forest at the Chakra Eco Lodge, and then the uh, last two nights at the beach. So you'll need obviously like your swimsuit and lighter clothes because it's going to be warmer at the beach and probably more humid. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll need a very, you know, varied layers of things just so that you can be comfortable in both yeah. those locations. We'll send you a, a recommended list, you know, um, and then we can also have uh, we can have more readings like these for questions. Yeah, like absolutely. That. So, so uh, as as the the date gets closer and you're buying a backpack or you're buying trekking poles or what kind of shoes should I bring those kinds of questions. I love answering gear questions. I'm such a gear nerd. I love it. So, I mean, yeah, pick my brains with regards to all those things. I'd be happy. Are there any other questions or comments? Welcome, Karina. Um, anything else you would like to know from our time together today? Can I just ask how long the flight is from Toronto? Like, yeah, uh, so, yeah, yeah, so. Approximately, approximately so, so Vancouver to Toronto um four and a half four and a half and San, Toronto's like halfway mark so and I think mm -hmm. Toronto to San Jose about five hours about four and a half to five same yeah yeah Karina feel free to unmute yourself hi it's Karina it's nice to be Karina. here yeah I was wondering um about the only thing that was problematic for me would be the scaling, like I forget what you call it. Do do you climbing. have to? Yeah, the climbing one, the rock climbing. I'm, uh, yeah, I'd re that was one thing that didn't really land for me. Even though I think, it, yeah, I did rappelling when I was, you know, a long, long time ago. But that, am I allowed to step out or bow out of something like that? Absolutely. Um, we we have both. We have rock climbing and we have tree climbing. And you might want to try tree climbing. Tree climbing is really cool. Uh, different, friendly. It really brings out your inner child. Um, and like I say, it's choose your own adventure. You can do it one meter off the ground or 30, uh, right? However you feel comfortable. Uh, you're going to be always wearing a harness and, and a 
a rope on top rope. So it's, you know, it's incredibly safe. Okay. Uh, and no one is pressured into to anything. If it's no. if it's something you're really like, no way. You yeah. can be there to observe others and support oh, yeah. others. You can be participate, be part of it without yes. having to engage in it. If that's something that really you don't yeah. want it, yeah, absolutely. Oh, thank you. Okay. And then the other, the final question I had was, um, is there an age? I'm sorry for showing up late. I had another meeting that I was on, but is there an age, an age restriction at all? Like, are you? We actually didn't even talk about that, but great, yeah. Absolutely uh, not. No, absolutely not. So yeah, uh, I, mean, I always use my mom as a point of reference, but my mom is my mom and I'm a professional adventure racer. So my my mom is, uh, is really adventurous too in, 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 in her ways. Uh, and uh, so she's repelled the waterfall with me and she's climbed the tree with me. Well, yeah. actually, the tree she did by herself. Uh, rappelling, we always do uh, in, in pairs. I always rappel next to to our guests. Uh, it's a really cool experience because I get to rappel with you, teach you everything as we're doing it, and also uh, keep your safety in my hands. And that's actually literally. Um, you'll see the method that I use is really cool. It's a method that I use to teach kids uh, because chakras is a, is a family lodge, so we teach kids mm -hmm. of all ages with their with their parents to, to do all the activities. Um, so the method is really cool. Um, and so, so my mom was seventy three when she rappelled down the waterfall and oh. actually, uh, okay. yeah. Uh, but but we we've had all ages of chakra. Like, well, my my nephews started going when they were three years old, uh, and well, they're now in their teens. And uh, we had, uh, with, with one of the wild women, the, uh, there's a company that does retreats at Chakra uh, with us, which we love to host for them. They're called Wild Women. Uh, and we had, I think she was a 79-year-old uh, woman that came to the, to the Wild Women retreats, uh, which was awesome. The itinerary for the Wild Women retreat is, is very different. It's mainly about, uh, you know, restoration, and they do very mild activities. Uh, yeah. But uh, but yeah, she came. She hiked up the chakra from the town. Uh, yeah, she. Oh nice. Okay, that's good. So I was just trying. I bought some cauliflower cooking, roasting. So didn't want to burn it. Uh, the other thought. Thank you. That's really helpful. I love that there's not a re age restriction. And I don't know if I I still refer to you as Majuri. I hope that's okay. Beautiful. Thank I you. met you as that through my daughter Hannah. Oh so, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. So, awesome. Yeah, so I just want it years ago. So I just, um, I really appreciate that. I did have another question. I have friends in Costa Rica and I've been trying to get down for a long, long time. Um, and I'm wondering, is there the option to stay longer in my, you know, and not have to fly back at the end of that yeah. segment? Absolutely. Yeah, Brent, uh, uh, Karina, you just missed that portion. You came in like pretty much right after we had talked about okay. that. But yeah, we'll a see. trip extensions pre and post fully welcomed uh and so you just you'll be in contact with me and i'll help you plan whatever you need okay perfect thank you yeah i'm very interested that'd be wonderful, wonderful. to have you i do i absolutely remember meeting you at the the cafe in, in yeah. so beautiful uh and we'll send up this replay so you can catch everything that you mm -hmm. um, okay. missed or so that you can review that and and again if there's any questions beyond what we've touched upon today, then please just send me an email m at madurimethod.com um, okay. and just reiterate for those of you who are really want to get in on the November, December retreats that you've got the, the special introductory discount until May 11th as well. So I'd like to, you know, extend that to you if, if you're, you're ready to commit and then we can help you, you know, prepare and plan for the retreat in whatever it is, six, seven months and get a payment plan if that feels more uh, digestible to you and you can start planning so that you have a really uh, memorable, uh, I really think of it as both an inner and outer adventure. For me, it's all about the external facilitating the deep inner work is really what um, we're doing here. So thank you so much for your presence, everybody. Thank you so much for your uh, wonderful questions. And uh, we can't wait to to share this with you yeah it's gonna be so beautiful and uh, yeah we're excited so thank you um yes reach out if you're ready to register you can send me an email and if you have any questions again just reach out i will send this replay on in the next day or two all right thank you so much Pura vida, everybody <laughs> take care Pura vida. bye bye, bye.